Hello everyone, Seth Chandler with Wittercoin in San Francisco. And you know what we're gonna talk about today? We're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna talk about coin shops. I love coin shops. I've always said they're like a sacred place. They're special, they're all different. But the topic is how you can get better deals at a coin shop, okay? Everyone asks me that all the time. And um, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit about kind of what we do and then give some general advice to a collector like how to approach a coin shop, because again, they're all different. Number one, everything you think you know about a coin shop, completely forget. Really important, okay? Um, you know, they're not in the Nordstrom's, they're not a customer service center. Some are, but most aren't, I'll tell you that. Again, they're all different. But so you have to, you know, you're not always right. You know, they kind of do things how they want to do. Most coin shops make the majority of their money by buying things from the public. You know, they buy a mortgage dollar for $22 and they sell it for $28 or, or whatever. You know, they buy coins from the public. Um, I will also say this. I would bet that the majority of the sales that coin shops do are to other dealers. Okay. So, for example, they buy a bunch of mortgage dollars from the public and they accumulate a thousand. Maybe they're only able to sell a couple hundred in their actual store. So what they do is they sell a lot of them wholesale. So there's, there's tons of people out there who buy that stuff. Coin market is much bigger than what you think. Okay, I'll tell you that. So the key is, is how do you get to look at a lot of really cool coins, the fresh stuff in a coin shop? You want to get offered it. It starts with just good old common sense that your mom and dad taught you. Have great manners. I know that sounds crazy, but be friendly. Remember. 80% of their sales are to other dealers. They make the majority of their money from buying things to the public. So when you go in there and say, you want to look through all this and all this and all this, and you buy a little bit, that's a very small portion of their sales. Again, we do those things in here. That's how we run our shop. We are very collector friendly. And it, I'm not like knocking other shops, but there's a lot of shops that just, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of business sense for a lot of people to believe it or not, to accommodate everyone. I mean, there's some people here that we can't accommodate. But, you know, we choose to accommodate certain things where it's not really worthwhile that I just believe in, like, you know, helping kids out or whatever it may be. We'll spend all the time or new collectors. But, you know, some other people, they choose not to do that. Um, so you got to just ignore everything you think you know. Probably the first thing you could do when you walk in, obviously be friendly. You know, don't expect them to be, oh, hello, can I help you? It's just probably not going to happen. Again, they're busy. Coin shops are very, very busy buying a lot of coins or chopping it up. Um, I would say another big thing is from a business perspective, try to understand like how much expenses they have. You know, if it's a fancy store with, 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 uh, you know, parking or it's in a bigger city or it's a one man operation, you can get a good sense for what they're paying rent or what they're paying not. It's not necessarily the people like us that have a big fancy showroom that we charge more. We just do many more transactions than a much smaller shop. Prices will be the same, a little bit more, a little bit less. It is what it is. A coin, a Bay Bridge commemorative half dollar is worth the same in my shop as it is a guy in Oklahoma. All right, so, so don't think that a shop charges particularly more because they have higher expenses. The way I accommodate for my higher expenses is we just do more. We just buy more. We just have more employees. We just do more coins. So um, the reason why I say that because it's a timing thing. If it's a one or two man operation, they might have more time versus a bigger operation, they may want to be a little bit quicker. Or it could be the opposite. Maybe a place like us has more time. That's the way we accommodate everybody versus the one or two man operation is busy shipping things to dealers. They're busy buying things from the public. So when you come in and you want to look at a few coins, you know, keep it quick. So the advice that I would recommend is, again, super friendly, super friendly vibe. Ask to look at something kind of broadly specific, like Morgan Dollars. Don't walk in and say, oh, can I see all your U.S. coins? Or can I see all your new fresh coins that you just bought? It's like the motivation from the average dealer to respond to that is very, very limited. Again, they make most of their money from buying from the public and they sell 80% of their coins wholesale. So, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you position what you're looking for in a simple, friendly manner, you'll have much better opportunities. So if I walk into a coin shop and again, I've had Witter for five years now. So before that, I was right on the other side. I was on that side of the camera just five years ago. Kind of have a general range like, hey, I'm looking for some interesting seated coins or seated half dollars or seated quarters. You know, what do you have that's available? And usually, you know, most people will show you stuff. Now, you got to have a good sense of the values too because we price all our coins very, very, very fair. 
Um, we want to buy them all back at, you know, whatever, 80, 90 percent, 70 percent of what we sell them for. We like our coins. Um, so you need to have a really good understanding of values. If somebody has a coin that you think is worth, you know, five hundred dollars and they're asking a thousand, it's probably not for you. Probably not worth negotiating on. Because again, he thinks it's worth a thousand. I mean, there's this shots. I'm just saying a general rule. If a guy wants a thousand, you're at five hundred. You're probably not going to come to some type of agreement. If a guy wants six hundred, and you're at five hundred, maybe something could be worked out. But just just keep it simple. Hey, like, what's your best price on this coin? Or can we meet in the middle? But you got to buy coins. And I would highly recommend that you try to buy coins very early on, as soon as you set foot in there. Even pay a little bit more than what you're used to paying, but you wanna start that relationship because that's the whole key. Because from a business perspective, again, if the guy's buying the same from the public, selling 80% wholesale, and he sees a, a customer come in, he wants to kind of quantify that time. Okay, so I'll spend 30 minutes with him or 20 minutes with him or five minutes with him and I'll generate this in revenue. You know, you gotta kind of make it worthwhile. Again, every shop is different. Every shop is different. You kind of have to respect their rules. But you come in friendly, you kind of have a general idea of what you want, you have a general understanding of prices, and you start buying coins, that'll take you a long way. Then guess what? You know, I think when you do business with somebody, it's a complete new ball game. You know, they'll open up or, you know, uh, you know, the goal is to like come back a week later. Maybe they have some other more coins that they could show you. So the goal is to keep coming in consistently and hopefully you get a phone call when they, the shop has material like what you're looking for. But you know, it happens all the time. People come in here and start barking and start over negotiating. It's just not. I'll tell you this. So when we have a dealer come in, okay? Again, this is my rules, my shop. That's just how it is. When there's a coin dealer out there, and I mean a coin dealer who buys and sells coins for a living, we tell them they have to spend $5,000 an hour or else it's not worth our time. We will bring out plenty of material and show. It's a process, like for to buy 100 coins at 5,000 or 20 coins, it's a lot of work on our end. We're showing you. We gotta send, you know, two employees gotta sit down with them. So, you know, if a dealer doesn't spend 5,000 dollars an hour, it's just not worth our time because they're gonna just take up a lot of time. So we have numbers that we have to hit as a business. Now, in collectors, it's completely different. You know, we have we accommodate everybody. You know, that's just that's what I've chosen to do with my business. You know, the, the way we present ourselves, the way the shop, the way the staff is trained, you know, it's just kind of dear to my heart. But again, not every shop is like that. So, um, you know, the, the key is to buy coins. You know, you go in there, buy coins. If you realize that, hey, there's a certain area that you like and they want twice as much or 50% more than what you think it's worth, forget about it. It's just not, it's not really a worthwhile relationship. So you're really trying to go in there and establish a relationship. Be somewhat quick and easy, but you know, it's hard, you know, if you're looking at a, an operation where you can tell they're very busy and you kind of hang out for like, you know, a couple hours and you spend like, you know, 50 bucks or 70 bucks, there's very limited coin shops that could actually sustain that. It's like, I have this rule when I go into a small business, any small business, I support it. I don't go in and look, oh, it's so cute. It's been here 30 years or whatever. You know, I spend a hundred, two hundred dollars because my thinking is, if I walk into a small business that's putting their heart and soul into it, and I'm like, oh, that's a deep place, and you walk away and don't spend any money, it's gonna close. It's as simple as that. So I try to support in my own way, you know, whatever, it's a shoe store or whatever, but that's why it's important when you go into a coin shop, you need to spend money. Um, another thing is, you know, we all like to cherry pick. Uh, cherry pick means, you know, it means a couple of things. It means buying, you know, a very expensive coin for a little money, or simply like, choosing the best examples of what's available. Like if we have, you know, hundred Morgan dollars in a box and you could, whatever, pick out 28 of them, that's fine. But if you lay them all out over the counter and you spend, you know, an hour doing that and you buy one coin, the economics of that aren't that exciting. You know, again, we do that, but not every coin dealer can accommodate that. So, you know, I guess just to summarize, great manners take you a long way understand the business a little bit is it big small what do you think they're paying expenses be very efficient and respectful of the other person's time and uh, position the coins that you're looking for understand prices buy coins and then uh, frequent the place i think it'll go a long way take it from me you know i've been in hundreds of different coin shops and you got to kind of have a plan you know you can't just go there and hang out for a few hours and talk forever um, it's just not sustainable
you know, so again, some businesses can accommodate that, but not everybody. So always understand that. So I hope your experiences are better at coin shops. Got any questions? Just, uh, you know, uh, put them in the comments section. Uh, other than that, you know, have fun, but support your local coin shops. Do whatever you can. Find the ones that you like and go there and buy coins. All right. So thanks. I'm out. Bye.